Thank you guys, this is awesome. Awesome, awesome stuff. How many people know Wholesaling Inc? Cool. How many people have heard the podcast? Amazing. So thank you to you guys. Because of Rhino Nation, because of all of our amazing listeners and people that do great shout outs for us, we were number two in the investment category in the nation for podcast. We can't knock off Dave Ramsey. That's the one guy that if you guys have an in or if you want to take care of it, <laughs> there will be a huge fee. All right, so number five in the business category. We're always right there with Tim Ferriss and Tony Robbins. And again, it goes back to each one of you guys that are listening, downloading, sharing your stories, but we love that podcast. It's just simply helping individuals get out there to share their story. Notice that it's not me and Tom on the podcast or Brent sharing just us, us, us. We're interviewing students that just recently did deals to just help inspire and motivate more individuals in this great nation that we live in. That's what you get to hear and we give gold nuggets, tips, tricks, everything for free. That's what you do. If you want to be coached, that's great, but we want to give as much value and always give more value than we ever charge in price. So here's some of the things that you can find us at, wholesalinginc.com, um, our YouTube channel, which has been gaining some awesome traction. We are late to the game on YouTube. You've got people who are like, we've got one million followers, and we're like, we've got... 13,000, like not much. <laughs> so it's been growing, it's been great. What I want to talk to you guys about is a little bit about the why. We always talk about the why. And I want you guys to understand something. It's not what you can't or what you want, it's what you can't live without. So when you come up with your why, I want you to think deep. And I want you to think one step further. How many have never done a deal but looking to do their first deal? Don't be shy, not just a long time, just a short time ago, May of 15 was when I got into wholesaling. So it's been a short, short, short time. Um, with that being said, I want you to think of this. When you're here right now and you're thinking, man, what do I do? There's all this information. It's just like Adam said, a water hose just and how do we take it all in? I want you to be smart on what you take in. Because if you take in everything and you start chasing too many rabbits, the likelihood of catching any of them will be 0%. So the best thing you can do is go with the sniper approach. Go with one thing at a time. Take one action. That's all you need to do. One action from this whole entire event that you know you're not doing, go do it, the one thing, and then have some other things maybe on the shelf that you can pull over once that one thing's done. But what I want you to think about if you're getting your first deal, what is it going to take? It's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And I want you to think about it in this way. If someone kidnapped one of my beautiful kids that I love to pieces, and they said, you have 20 days to find me a deal, or you'll never see that child again. I can promise you, you will not be watching Netflix. I can promise you, you will not have the $200 cool package for golf and ESPN and everything else, I can promise you, you won't even sit on the couch. Here's the best part, guys. Think of that in a reality. If someone kidnapped your kid, you have 20 days. 20 days, what would you be doing today so that you can make sure you get to see that kid again? Now here's the best part. No one's kidnapping your kids. <laughs> Just give what you would be willing to give if someone just took your child. And that's what it's going to take to get your first deal. And then the snowball effect will start to hit. Because until then, it's a lot of faith. It's a lot of hope. And people are telling you to do this. And there's so many people out there that say, no, no, it's not that way. Do it this way. No, it's not this way. It's do it that way. And there's all these techniques. There's so many ways to invest. But if you don't start now, and take some bit of the action from that you've got from this event and go take massive imperfect action, it's never going to happen. It's going to be hard. But let that teach you and show you that you're on the right path. If it's easy, I'm telling you right now, you're on the wrong path. If you're uncomfortable, congratulations. You're on the path. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. I came home 
in uh, 2015. I came home to my wife. And uh, I'm a crier, guys, so if I cry, it's, I can't blame the Jazz. They won last night instead of lost, and so I don't have any good jokes to cover it up. But I came home early from work one day, and I thought, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to surprise my wife. I went in. I walked in through the main door, walked into the kitchen, and I caught my wife with her head down in her hands. I knew something was wrong instantly, guys. I walked over to her and I put my arms around her and I said, sweetheart, what's wrong? She wouldn't reply. So I said, sweetheart, what's wrong? She looks up to me right in my eyes and she says, Cody, how are we going to pay our bills this month? And yet I could tell she was so stressed about it and I didn't realize how bad it was. But my heart was just like, oh my gosh, I'm the provider here. 68% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and only have $800 to hold them over till their next paycheck. I was part of that statistic. How many know Tony Robbins? I'm going to need your help on this one. How many have you been to like a UPW or some kind of event? Awesome, awesome. So I'm going to need your help. You're going to know where you guys are going to jump in on this one. Okay? So I had been motivated a bunch by Tony Robbins. He was saying, oh, if you want life to change, it's you that has to change, right? And he says, if you want life to get better, I know my voice is better than his. <laughs> it's you that has to get better. Who's with me? Say I. I. All right. This is Tony Robbins. I knew things had to change. Insurance wasn't going to do it. And if it was, it was going to take a long time. We had way too much month at the end of the check, every single month. <laughs> and I'm telling you, something had to change. But it wasn't insurance. It wasn't the world. It wasn't anything but me. I knew it was going to be me that was going to have to change. I'm going to have to get better. So let me ask you a reality check question. Put yourself in this question and think about this as you're doing it, OK? First of all, where do you want to be five years from now? And I would write this down and really spend time on this when you get back home. Because thinking of your dreams and where you want to be, if you don't know the destination, it's hard to get there. If my wife tells me, Cody, you've got to go to the grocery store, I need dinner tonight. And I'm like, OK, sounds good. I go over there, and I'm like, awesome. Here's an onion. Here's a bag of chips. Here's some celery and soda. Let's do that. I take it back. And she's like, what is this? I'm like, dinner. <laughs> and she's like, no, 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 we're having spaghetti tonight. I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me? It's like noodles and pasta sauce and all this stuff. I just went out there and grabbed it. Would we ever go to the grocery store without a checklist if we knew what we want for dinner and we're just going there and we're just going to start picking stuff? No. That would have been so much more successful had my mom just said, or my mom. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've been out of that home for so long. Can we cut this part out? <laughs> Awkward, he said for a fee. <laughs> Mom, I love you. Wherever that came from. So if my wife would have just given me the actual grocery list, I would, have, I would have done it. And it would have been easy, right? Because she gave me the direction I needed. Think about that with your own life. If you don't know where you want to be five, five years from now, how are you going to get there? If you want to go on vacation and you're just driving, you're like, I don't know where we're going. We're just going to drive. But if you're specific, I'm going to go to Disneyland. You're going to know exactly what to plug in the GPS, and it's going to lead you exactly where to go. Ask this question. Here's something that's going to be daunting as you ask yourself this question. I want you to think about someone five years ahead of you right now in your same industry. So if you're here and you're like, man, I want to get into real estate, but I'm not in real estate right now. I'm working a full-time job with corporate America because I have some amazing golden handcuffs that are giving me benefits and insurance. And they talk up this amazing game that it's going to be great the rest of my life. And I have a 401k that pays 1.5%. And I'm telling you, if that's it, here's what I want you to do. Fast forward five years. And just look at someone that's in the chair five years ahead of you in that industry. At that moment, are you fine? trading places with that individual, looking at where they're at five years ahead. If you're fine, 
then maybe you're on the right path. If you're not fine trading places with the person five years ahead of you, Tony Robbins, if you want life to get better, it's you that has to get better. You're going to have to make a change because nothing's going to change at that job. But when are you going to put it all in on you? When are you going to go to the casino of life and go all in on you? No more education, no more school, no more corporate America, but go to the casino of life and say, I'm all in, baby. I'm going in on Cody right here. And just put it on you. I would suggest doing it. You'll realize there's too much education out there, and I'm going to get going on this. The next thing I want you to do is think about instruction over education. How much good instruction have we received in this event, guys? Anyone? I can pull away some amazing gold nuggets here that have been awesome that I can implement. Okay? Instruction over education. Our nation has over a trillion dollars. A trillion dollars attached to student loans. Guys, this is ludicrous. Do you know why? It's because our school, that system is education based. It's not instruction based. It's a bunch of philosophy. It's a bunch of come here and you can't fail. You're going to learn how to just work on your own. There's no teamwork. It's you take your own test. But when you go to life, when have you ever been at a job that you don't work as a team? It's complete opposite, right? On top of that, they say 27% of people that actually go to school actually go into what they just studied. 27%. And then we wonder why there's a trillion dollars, over a trillion dollars of debt attached to student loans. It's because it's all education and it's not the step-by-step -step instruction. How many have been caught into analysis paralysis that's been one of the biggest disease spreads in 2017, 18, 19 by watching YouTube University, right? We go there. <laughs> How many people get caught up? It's easy to get caught up at YouTube University. And all of a sudden you're watching a video and then all of a sudden this next video pops up and you're like, well, I got a little time. <laughs> Why don't I watch this one too? And at the end of that one, all of a sudden the next video pops up and you're like, well, I haven't even thought about this. I can do my own drop ship from Amazon? This is going to be amazing. I mean, I started with wholesaling. It got into apartments. Now I own an Amazon drop ship. This is like the most incredible thing. And then on top of that, the next video pops up. And pretty soon you're just selling your kids because you can't afford anything in life because you're just stuck at YouTube University, right? Don't get stuck at YouTube University. Take from this event one to two items. That is the biggest secret to life, and none of them can be mine. They could be whoever else was up here, and you said, man, that is what I need. So many great individuals have got up here and shared incredible instruction on saying, here's the company you use, you just got to sign up, $97, guys. I almost want to call that guy and say, what do I need to do to buy you out? Because I'm going to go to a subscription model, right? It's crazy. Cheap, cheap stuff that's adding value to people's business. Okay, sniper approach. What is the deadliest aim in our military force? Huh? Sniper. If you had someone out there with a shotgun and they're like 100 yards away from you, who are you more afraid of? The sniper at 1,000 yards or the shotgun at 100 yards? The sniper. He has one bullet, but that one bullet is so focused and it will hit its target every single time. The shotgun is like more of like the duck hunter. Half of them are drunk, end up <laughs> bringing zero ducks back, and like 90% of the BBs are just like flying everywhere and 10% maybe hit. But now tie this into our investing world. How many people are shooting shotguns trying to just say, hey, I'm going to do this, 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 this. I'm going to do Facebook and PPC and direct mail, and I'm going to do it all. And then on top of this, just drop ship. I can't, I can't put that video down. <laughs> and you start shooting the shotgun. Those are the brokest 
individuals and investors I have ever met still to this day. One thing at a time. There could be two or three great things that you want to implement this year that you've learned from here. Awesome. Now prioritize it. Which one's the most important of the three? Put the other two on the shelf and bring just the one over because if you do two at a time and something fails, which one was it? Was it one or was it two? I don't know. So if you bring over just one at a time and it fails, you know what failed. Go over and bring the second one over, okay? Keep it very, very simple. Okay, power of marketing. Here's your formula. formula right there, write it down. This is gonna be easy, easy stuff. I always loved formulas because I hated math, right? Math was an awful subject, but yet I'm gonna use it today. So here's what it looks like. Consistent marketing leads to consistent conversations. You've heard this now repeated multiple times. Corey Brotwright just nailed this, right? He just said this, this consistent marketing thing. It'll lead to consistent conversations, which will lead to consistent appointments, which will then lead to consistent offers, consistent contracts, and when you get consistent contracts, you consistently get what? You consistently get paid. So I want you to think about this. If you miss any of these in the equation, will it add up to consistently getting paid? So it's not just the marketing. The marketing is what triggers now everything else that you need to put into place consistently into that equation. Does that make sense? Okay, there's your equation. Here we go, direct mail is not dead. I can promise you that. These are my numbers for 2018, and I'm gonna break down my three categories. Direct mail equates to 800,000 coming into the business in gross rev, okay? Of that, I have my expenses at 120,000, which then leads to my net rev, which is 680,000, that corner down there. That's the cost, and then we have the CPL is cost per lead. Okay, that's not cost per conversion. If it was that, I'd be not here right now. I'd be in the Bahamas. That's just cost per lead, okay? With your outbound, that's what we call our cold calling, okay? We had 400 and just shy of 450K in to the business, and the expenses on that were just shy of 85,000. So the net on that was 362,000. And there's your cost per lead. And then you have your web, or what everyone's been calling the PPC, okay, pay-per-click. Those are the numbers right there. Just shy of 400K, look at the cost per on that. So the cost per lead is high, but then also look at where, how much revenue comes in and what you actually get to net. That's pretty, pretty fun stuff. So web is gonna have huge growth in 2019 for us because of these numbers. KPIs. That key performance indicator, if you're not tracking them, you're not growing. You have to know these numbers, because at the end of the month, if you have five grand sitting in a bank account that's made for marketing, you want your numbers to be able to say, hey, throw it here because here's your best return. You don't want the mind to all of a sudden step in and say, hey, no, 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 no. No, I think we should do this. I've seen people on YouTube University, and it was like the fourth video in, and we should have done this, actually. Don't let your mind tell you how to run your business or it will suffer, it will fail. I promise you that. That sounds crazy, that sounds rude. Let the numbers lead and guide your business. Let me ask another question. If you could ask this question yourself, write this down. What do you, to be 10x more, Okay, ask this question, to be 10x more in 2019, and if you wanna do 2x, 3x, 5x, 6x, it's okay. 10x is kind of tied to Grant Cardone, who love or hate relationship. But if you wanna double, triple, quadruple, 10x in 2019 from where you are in 2018, two questions you gotta ask yourself and stay true to. First question is, what do I need to start doing? And then come up with a list of the things that you're gonna to need to start doing for 2019 to 10X from 2018. But we really 
so many times we don't spend the value on where the better question is. What do I need to stop doing? If you will ask yourself those two questions and put them on whether it's a vision board, put it on a sheet, put it on a whiteboard, something that you get to see in multiple areas of your life, whether it's your bathroom mirror, whether it's your computer screen, whether it's a wall at the office or wall in your home office, that you see these things and then have someone in your home hold you accountable. My wife knows that if I start doing some of the things that I said I'm going to stop doing, I gave her full permission, full reins to say, uh-uh, that's on the stop list, stop doing it. And I gave her permission to stop me in my tracks. We had this conversation just the other night talking about this. These are two powerful questions. Again, this is how it leads you to where you want to be five years from now. How many people do direct mail currently? Does anyone do it in the multifamily? I think there's going to be success in this, by the way. I truly, truly, truly do. He gave you the scenario on what you want, the high equity. Do you know what one's really good right now is on outbound, cold calling? We have students, but I also, do you know TTP, Brent Daniels, anyone? Okay, complete rock star. This guy can talk on a phone and not be turned off or get shy or scared. He will go to town on a phone, and he has a team doing it. They're calling and reaching out to, and here's something, a tip I can give you. They're reaching out to multifamily, and you guys would think this is crazy. No one has their multifamily in their name and not in the name of an LLC. This is one of the easiest cold calling list, is calling those individuals that aren't sophisticated investors. They've owned it for a long time because they wanted to park some money, but it's still sitting in their name with no liability protection from an LLC. He calls those individuals and he gets amazing results and amazing deals from that. So if you can find multifamily and target some of the people that still have it in their name and not an LLC, I'd be picking up the phone doing that. I use LexisNexis, but batch skip tracing, don't tell Brent I told you even though this is recorded, TTP gives you a discount. So if you do that at the, at the um, checkout, TTP gives you a huge discount on batch skip tracing. Is this correct, John? Have you used it before? This is correct, Brent Bowers. Okay, so TTP is the code. Whether that's all cap or all this, I don't know. Doesn't matter, there you go. That's a huge one, guys. Uh, list source for tribe members, they've been able to use this for a long time. By the time you do your, your um, high equity owner occupied and non-owner occupied, usually it's right around when you type in the criteria, about 35 cents, 40 cents per lead for those that are just logging in for their first time. Or you can buy where you put money in and they, they substantially knock it down. With Wholesaling Inc, what we do for our tribe members to always find ways to just give back, three cents per lead. It is huge, it is a huge swing. So if you bought a list of 10,000 names, instead of paying 3,500 bucks, you're paying 300 bucks. So a huge, huge swing on that, uh, on list source. So list source is absolutely, like Corey Boatwright said, an amazing place to get awesome information for those that are high equity, owner occupied, and absentee owner. Any questions so far? All right, let's keep rolling. So direct mail. How many postcards? I get this question all the time. If you're just getting into direct mail, you've never done it, it's kind of go big or go home. I basically want you to get a deal or die trying. I don't want you to die and you're gonna realize you're not going to die. But what you wanna do is give yourself enough opportunity. Wholesaling is all about three things. You've got your motivation, your drive, and the third one is volume. If you don't have volume, it's not gonna work. You can have the most motivation in the world, the most drive in the world, but if you're not getting up to the plate to actually take the swing, you're never going to get a deal. It's all about volume. And there's so many ways you can get deals. We talked about, we've heard quite a few ways that you can do subject to, seller finance, there's so many ways to do this. Pick one strategy right now, okay? Whether that's simply assigning the contract, or maybe it is just subject to's, or maybe it's a double close because your, your state doesn't allow you to do the assignment, so you have to actually close on it with transactional money and then turn around and sell it the next day to your cash buyer. Whatever it is, be hyper-focused on just one thing right out of the gates. Does this all make sense? Yes? 
wow, this is quiet. Does this make sense? All right, all right, all right. So how many postcards? If you're going to get in, we want to turn this in from faith to fact as quick as possible. Because if you start spending all this money on direct mail and it's taking six months to come back, you're going to lose a lot of faith, a lot of hope, and you might go back to corporate America. I don't want that. I want you to be thriving in wholesaling. And so if you're going to do it, just pony up, jump on that rhino, and start charging. What you want to do is a minimum 2,500 pieces a week. I put there a week for 30,000. That's that was wrong. That should have said per month. So we do 30,000 pieces a month, my company. That's how many we have to put out to get what we want so we can get that volume. There's going to be a ton of people tell you to tell you pound sand. They'll tell you to do things that are physically impossible. <laughs> They'll tell you whatever they are that's rude, right? And then you're going to have deals where my 10-year-old could pick up the phone and I'd be like, hey, Bentley, talk to this guy for a minute. Tell him daddy can only offer this and to sign right here. <laughs> and Bentley would go right out there and say, my dad said, um, sign here. And you would get that deal. Those deals exist. But they only exist if you're getting the volume that you need. Because remember, this game is big on volume. How many pigs do you have to kiss, uh, for a lack of words, quote, frogs. I'm going to say pigs. Pigs is so much better than frogs. <laughs> So how many frogs do you have to kiss to get one deal in apartments? How many? 100 and 150 frogs, right? Just, and then the prince or princess comes to, to reality, right? Here's the numbers for wholesaling. 100 phone calls come in, 75 of them tell you to pound sand or physically do things, and the other 25, one to three of them are ready to go right now. When I say one to three, one of them is like, just come pick it up. <laughs> the other two are people that you can go in there and kind of strategize and talk about. And then the other, let's call it 21 to 24, that's your pipeline. Those are people that are just not necessarily ready at the moment, but have not said no and have not been rude to you. Those are people that are going to be followed up on in the future. So 100 phone calls. Now, if your response rate, knowing your KPIs, is 1%, you're going to need 10,000 mail pieces to get 100 phone calls. Did I do my math right? Okay. 10,000 mail pieces get you 100 phone calls. That's your cost per. Now you can start breaking it down. This is now broke down very easy for you. Okay? 10,000. If you have higher, God bless you guys. That's awesome. That's going to be amazing for you. Some people call me like, we are getting a 4% return on our response rate. And I'm like, like, don't tell me that. I'm coming into your market. Let's roll. Let's do it. OK. How often do you want to send these out? I like it on six to eight week cycles. I want to make sure that they're seeing my message often, but not too often. OK. Here's the beauty behind it, and I'm going to get down to the end. The average sales cycle. Sometimes we do a sell, like a, uh, we put out the, the postcard, and one, two times, and they're like, I don't know if I can do anymore. I don't know if I can invest any more of my money into this. Do you know what the average is? Says Uncle GC. He says five to 12 touches before someone actually commits and uses you. Whether you believe in a God, karma, universe, whatever it is, mine, it's God, right? My whole point is, God loves me, every bit as much as every one of you. That's my belief. And my belief is he needs me to succeed to help my family out. But on top of that, he needs each one of you to succeed to help your family out. So for me to now go back and think, that should have been my deal. Should have been mine. I needed that deal. That's a scarcity mindset. Live a mindset of abundance. Know that that abundance will come back tenfold. Not every deal is meant to go for you. If me and Corey were in the same market in Oklahoma, he would get deals and I would get deals. Why? Because I believe if you're truly out there just serving individuals, doors are going to open, whether it's God, karma, or universe, whatever you want to believe, those doors are going to open and you're going to be led to those people that need your help.
That's my true, true belief. We're all going, guys, to the ocean with five-gallon buckets. There's enough water for all of us. Here's the holy grail of marketing. Write this down. It's the right message to the right people at the right time. If you learn those three things, get ready for your phone to just start ringing off the hook to the point where you're going to sue me because I'm going to have to buy you new iPhones because they're hot and melting in your car because the rings won't stop. The right message to the right people at the right time. Okay? What is the message? Keep it simple. Did you see how simple it was on Boatwright's slide? So simple. I personally don't like pictures. This is just one philosophy. Know that Corey has data that's telling him different. So this is not saying anything against any of the speakers up here. I personally don't like pictures. Most of the time, what I have found is I get a picture, for example, of a postcard in my mail. And it has the spider, and the spider's upside down. And he's dead, right? Who's, who's uh, sent you that postcard? The Terminator, right? The Exterminator. Which, what am I? The Terminator. I'll be back. <laughs> Not the Terminator. The Exterminator. The guy that's going to kill the bugs, right? He just marketed you, so it's like gone. You don't, have to, you don't have to read the message because there's a dead spider that tells you who is marketing you. I don't like to be sold, but nor does anyone in this room like to be sold. We like to buy, but we don't like to be sold. So the marketing can be very, very simple. I don't like the flipped up spider that's dead. I also don't like the for sale sign and there's a sold across it and there's two people shaking hands and like a bunch of money's falling down from the sky. <laughs> like realtors, come on, let's think outside the box on this one. No one wants to be sold. So I keep it very, very simple. I keep the message simple. I do it in the handwritten font, no different than what Corey was suggesting. Handwritten font and it's just simple. My name's Cody. And curious if you're interested in an offer on your house at 123 Main Street. For a fair cash offer, call me at, put a phone number. Simple to the point in handwritten font. The reason why you want to do that is you want to create something where they have to read it. If you have a picture, they semi already know what's going on. Mine is so plain Jane, white postcard, black handwritten font, and it makes them have to read it. Like, is it from the Boy Scouts? Is it from the church? Is it from, they don't know until they read the message. But you only have a quick little time to get that message across. You don't want to do, I've seen some postcards, and it's like, I had to take a nap and three drinks in between reading the whole thing. You don't want that. They don't have that much time, and you don't have that much time to get your message across. Keep it very, very simple. No pictures. Short and to the point. No one wants to be sold, and makes you have to read what we just covered. Here's the different list that I want you to look at and think of, okay? Here's what's called your distress list and your non-distressed list. Your distressed lists are those that, there's two things to make a deal, okay? And you can battle this and say, but if we do subject to, then there's this, this, this. So let's just keep it very simple. Two things that make a deal. Motivation and equity. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. Okay, motivation and equity. The distress list tells you the motivation. So those are the list if they're behind on their taxes, if they're behind, or if they're, someone's getting evicted, those are some of my best, and I'm putting this almost in order of how hot they are in Utah, and you guys can start using them. These are in order of like my preferred down to my least preferred. So tax delinquent, we get that from our county. Salt Lake makes it very, very easy for us. You can go online and get it. Um, so that's very easy, and then you have a virtual assistant just end up doing like the, the scrubbing and scraping of it. Eviction is my favorite. I'm telling you right now, if you're not doing the eviction list, get on that list as fast as you can. Find it in your city. For us, there's an online site you can do it. You can meet up with uh, divorce attorneys or any kind of attorneys that are doing the eviction. There's so many ways to get this eviction list. Get on it. You will hit so many individuals at the right time. When you see the, the eviction's been processed, Call them, market them, whatever you need to do, you're gonna see a high chance of someone being very motivated on the other side that someone just smoked meth, 
This is a real scene. Smoked meth in their house and dumped concrete down their toilets. That's the phone call I got. As much as a mess as he said it was, I was like, I smell money, I don't smell meth. Like there's no meth in here. I smell like cha-ching on this one. He had not one duplex, he had two duplexes. But I happened to have mail on one of them. And the other one's like, well, while you're here, why don't you look at this one next door? These deals ended up paying 25 grand each, and the phone conversation couldn't have been more than five minutes, and meeting at his house couldn't have been more than 15 minutes. Eviction is awesome, because you're hitting someone that is just done. And these people are savvy individuals. They know they can list it with a realtor. It's not that. And I don't convince people to go with me. I go in there always up front saying, your highest and best you know is going to be listing this with a real estate agent, right? They agree. So how do I help you if it's not about the money? Well, it's because I've got to close in seven days. Bingo. Right? The lead just went from a three to like a five. And here's another one. I hate Utah. I hate all you Mormons. Well, you just bumped up to a seven. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> In fact, the cash that's going to pay you is a Mormon. <laughs> uh, and so you've got to be willing to, to just find out the why. Why are they selling their home? Okay, That's the biggest thing. Motivated people. Those are your distress list. Motivation's there. Now you've got your non-distress list. Those are your high equity that you can get from list source. Absentee owner and owner occupied. So those are two phenomenal lists. Now what does this do? This now opens up the other half. There's equity. Now you're just reaching out and finding motivation. I want you to realize when you're on the phone calls though, that you do not just talk about price. It's so easy to get caught up talking about the home. Let me give you a question right now that you can write down that I'd suggest you do on every one of your phone calls. This looks like a nice home. Why are you considering selling it? Notice that you're talking big about the home. You're not acting like, here, it's me, it's me, it's only me, you're only going to use me, and I'm going to be this, I'm going to close in seven days, I'm going to have this, I'm not going to uh, any realtor fees, I'm not going to have any taxes, I'm, I'm going to do everything. Everyone offers this, by the way. Everyone can close in seven days. Everyone can do it by paying your closing cost. Everyone can do it with no commission fees. So what are you going to do different? Okay, That's what I want you to think about. Ask the why. It's the why. It has nothing to do with the house. Everyone thinks I'm crazy when I tell you this has nothing to do with real estate. It has nothing to do with real estate. If I took my guitar to a pawn shop because I'm just sick of it sitting in the corner, they're going to say, here's 10 bucks. Tomorrow they sell it for 40. They make $30 on my guitar. Why do I pick real estate? Because I can do $20,000 instead of $30. It's going to take a lot of guitars to match that, right? It has nothing to do with real estate. People are bringing their problems to you. You're delivering a solution, and the byproduct is you get a contract that allows you to purchase their home. That's the secret. So when you're asking questions, don't, I mean, you gotta somewhat talk about the home, right? Or they're gonna think it's a little bit weird. But don't focus on the home. Focus on why. Why are you selling this home? And you ask it by, this looks like a beautiful home. Why are you considering selling it? Oh, you know, I'm just, I'm now moving from Colorado to Utah. Awesome. That doesn't tell us anything yet, so dig deeper. What's in Utah? Oh, my parents are in Utah. Awesome. So are you going to live in the same neighborhood, or are you going to live, like, just right by them? Well, we're actually going to be moving in with them. Now you just went from a three to a seven, right? But you still don't know the why. So dig a little bit further. Let me tell you something that's awesome. I use this all the time. And that is how to build up on a positive note so that they tell you the truth. If I said, um, if I said, Corey, how much money do you make every single year? Most likely, he's going to say, none of your business. That's just a rude question to ask people. But what if I said, Corey, dude, I see the car you drive. I see the clothes you wear. You look phenomenal, man. You've been in the best shape you've ever been in. 
you must make like 500, 600, 700K a year. You're looking great, dude. Corey's gonna be like, I wish now he does happily make probably that or more. But <laughs> if you're talking to someone that might be making 50 grand, they'll be like, I wish I made 500 grand. I actually make 50 grand. See how you can ask that question two different ways? One of them is actually turning off, and the other one's like, oh man, they're talking me up. I don't make that. I actually make 50. <laughs> now use that in this phone call. So when you call out, you're living with your mom and dad because Utah has a lot of construction going on. You're getting a nice, fat, new, amazing home built for you right now, right? Assume the positive. Assume the awesome. You're moving with mom and dad because you're getting a new home built. Uh, actually, why we're moving in is because my husband lost his job. Right? Or I could have asked, why are you moving in with mom and dad? None of your business. Do you see that? Turn it to a positive. Ask them in a positive way that makes them want to tell you the truth because you're assuming it's actually this and it's amazing. And they'll come out with the truth. How many feel like you're in a competitive market? Oh, I love the truthfulness of this. Here's the secret. There is none. There's no competition. There's no such thing as competition. It doesn't exist. I seriously mean this. We're all going to the ocean with five gallon buckets. If your family was 100 yards up at the, at the ocean and I'm down here, I'm like, oh, screw Roger Jacobson and his family for being here. Kids, go get the five gallon buckets. Go to the ocean, go grab some buckets. I don't want them to have this much fun. Go grab some water out of there. Like, I want to take their water down. Guys, there's no such thing as competition. And do you know how you can kill your so-called competition if you do believe it exists? It's this one thing that I do on every one of my phone calls when I end my phone. Our team does this now. I don't even go on the appointments anymore. So, phone call. Here's this one. You guys ready? End it this way and you will literally rip up every one of the postcards that are right with yours that are stacked this high in the house. I love direct mail. How do I now get all those ripped up? I end my phone call this way. Always serving, always loving. If you're not passionate about this and you're actually not doing it with a big service heart, this is who I am. I love serving individuals, giving to individuals, regardless of the outcome. I end it this way. Hey Cindy, I'm going to be coming out to your property at 3 o'clock on Tuesday and I may or may not be a fit. If I'm a fit, we'll move forward and I'll show you what that process looks like. If we're not a fit though, I'm still going to sit with you in your house and I'm going to help you find out what is the best fit for you. If you end every phone call that way, you literally just got them to grab that stack of postcards and say, throw them in the garbage because either Cody Hoffine's coming out here to buy my home or he's going to sit down and help me find out who should buy my home. That's the secret. They don't want to show the home 15 times. Mark my words. How many people have been on an appointment they're like, oh, let's just go with you guys because I don't want to show this four more times. Have any of that happened to anyone? It's happened to me a lot. They don't. They don't want to. So make sure you end the phone conversation in a giving way in the sense of I'm either going to buy your home or I'm still going to sit down with you, love you, serve you all the way through to the end. Yes, the, the conversation. Okay, so just basically say, when you're talking to them, just say, hey, I may or may not be the fit. If I am, I'll show you the process when I get there. If I'm not, I'm still going to sit down with you and help you find out what is the best fit. Okay? Simple? ERT, establish a relationship of trust. Know that I didn't do B, what was it? Uh, BRT it is. <laughs> Where's all the Utahns? <laughs> I had to switch it to ERT. BRT is the, the Mormon church use it for the missionaries, build a relationship with trust. And so I didn't want to get knocked down by my own church, so I put ERT, establish a relationship with trust. So what you want to do when you go on every appointment is establish a relationship of trust. That's what gets you the contracts. Go in there and serve those individuals. Outserve your competition, out love what your competition's showing, out giving kindness than what your competition is going, and you are going to get the contract nine times out of ten. It's like 30% of the time it works every time. Um, <laughs> getting contract, think about that one. Um, I want you to think about when you go on the appointment of how you can serve. Serve, 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 serve. 
Establish relationship of trust. We spend 30 minutes with each one of our individuals in their home before we actually talk about the home. 30 minutes we sit down and talk to them. And I want you to think about it in another way. What if your mom just called you and says, son, daughter, I have cancer. Are you going to say, well, tell me a little bit about your home. How many beds and baths was it, mom? Probably not, right? Shame on that individual if that's how you'd respond to your mom having cancer. That's what you need to do to each one of your individuals that you're going out on appointments with. They're going to share some real problems. And if you just go in there and say, okay, so you're behind on medical bills and taxes, so this carpet looks like a disaster. <laughs> the backsplash with the frogs on it. I mean, I can give you 120 grand, take it or leave it. That's what your competition's doing, guys. Don't do that. Go in there and talk to them. Build a relationship of trust. Be sincere. The better you establish relationship of trust, the more contracts you're going to get. That's the byproduct. It's not about the home. So don't do anything that has to do with the home. Only do what is relevant and ties you to the individual. Because they don't care about what you have to say until they know that you care about them. Let me say that again. They don't care about what you have to say until they know that you care about them. So you've got to show that pretty dang quick. The average of five, guys, I'm going to speed through this. I've got a couple minutes before I go Q&A. Average of five, Jim Rohn says you're the average of the five closest individuals you spend the most time with. I want you to think about this. Who are you surrounding yourself with? There's a couple things I want you to think that doesn't mean get rid of your friends and family. Know that that's not what that quote means. It does mean get rid of your friends and family in certain areas of your life though. And are you willing to do that? Because who you surround yourself with, it's inevitable that they influence, it's, it's impossible to hang out with someone and that their influence doesn't, to the positive or negative, wear off onto you. That'd be the same as me saying, let's go swimming but not get wet. It's impossible. So who are you hanging out with? The power of this quote is to find a community, to find a tribe, like this room of people that are wanting to go places. Surround yourself with individuals that not just necessarily want to do what you want to do, but also are in the destination that you want to be at. Think about this. If you are hanging out with people that are already at the destination, you're going to instantly realize that they're living principles that you may not be living. But as you see these five individuals that are all up here in the destination that you want to be at, all succeeding, and they're all living the same principles, when you start living those same principles, the likelihood of you becoming them becomes a reality. Think about that. That's the power of that quote. It's not meant to say kick your friends to the curb or your mom and dad because they told you not to get rentals. No. It's meant to be go to the source and ask those individuals that you're looking and seeking guidance from. Make sure you're willing to trade places with them in that field that you're asking guidance from. If I want to be a millionaire, this is no offense, this is not what I mean by this, but it sounds offensive. If I want to be a millionaire, I'm not going to go talk to a person that's bagging at Walmart. I'm not saying that rude, but that person is not successfully a millionaire and can actually give me the feedback that I need to become a millionaire. If you want to be spiritual, my first thing would be probably don't go to the bar. You're probably not going to see God there. <laughs> But there's great individuals out there that are very spiritual individuals. Go surround yourself with them. If they're in the destination that you want to be at, start living those principles and the likelihood of you becoming them becomes a reality. Here's your last quote, guys. This one is killer. Jim Rohn's one of my favorite. Indecision is the greatest thief of opportunity. Some of you are making a commitment right now while you're here at this event. When I get home, I'm doing this. I'm doing this and I'm doing this. But guess what? When you go home, if spouse isn't on board, it could be hard. So I'd suggest you get spouse on board. It could be you go to Sunday dinner and mom and dad or uncle and aunt, did you not see what happened in 08? You're an idiot. <laughs> You're going to get into this? You're going to get into real estate? 
And here you are making this decision. You're feeling what you need to do. You see your path. But inevitably, you're going to go home and things will start to shift slowly but surely. That's why I want you to know my last slide is this. Indecision is the number one thief of opportunity. You've got to be decisive. You have to be decisive. You have to pull the trigger because if you don't, someone is right around the corner that is willing to pull the trigger like that and you just missed out on yet another opportunity. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook. I always give value content there all the time. Go over there, give me a shout out, love it. And then ultimately, looks like seven minutes of Q&A. Did I get it done enough time? It's about three to four. Oh my gosh, why do I always ruin this one? Hello? This could be awkward. That's about three. How's my breath? That's about three to four. <clears throat> my voice is already gone. I may as well just scream. So that's now that, now that we went through all that, it's three questions. <laughs> three questions. It's three questions. Hey, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get with the questions. You'll get a little uh, raffle ticket. So hopefully you'll win on the next raffle. Um, let me let me go through. Uh, so okay, there's one. He's gonna be one. Say your name. Dan. Dan, who's two? Who's the next question? Fred is two. Fred. And then who's the third? Uh, back here is Fabio. Okay, perfect. Let's do it. Oh yeah. So you go ahead. We need this one. Just for I think he's good that. Essentially, okay. the the mic gods are saying, "Get off the stage." I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So kidding. So kidding. <laughs> Woo! They came back. <laughs> Guys, how was that? Did that deliver any value? Something that you can take home? Take home just one thing. I know I shared a bunch. Hopefully something connected with all of you, at least one thing. Take it home. Go use it. But let's rock and roll. Awesome. So thank you. That definitely added a lot of value. Really appreciate you being here. Perfect. Uh, thank you. you. Definitely mentioned was around finding multifamilies where the owner is still listed not as the LLC. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. That's probably right better. Uh, do you have a specific source for that? You mentioned a couple. Particular does list source pull apartments, Corey? Yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah. So it does. So you can pull that list from list source, and that'd be your equity as well. Equity, and then also being able to filter by actually owner, owner on it as opposed to an LLC. Yes, and if you tether some of the other stuff that has been added that was amazing was the actual years, like late 70s, 80s, 90s. I wouldn't have known that stuff. So I'm, I'm not in multifamily, so guys, I'm not here to give you your best shot. I'm, I could say stuff, you'll lose big maybe, because I don't know it. Um, but I'll tell you, yes, Brent Daniels, that guy's crushing like smaller multifamily by just cold calling. That's crushing awesome. it, Thank you. crushing it. Pull by uh, square footage, pull by square footage. Pull by square footage. Next question. Fred. How you doing? Good, good, good. I had a question. You said um, when you give that example of your student that got that deal uh -huh. that you've been mailing to for three years, are you mailing that same list like year after year? Over and over. Here's why. Here's where it's different. You might be in the gadget industry and no matter what, your gadget, someone's going to be like, I don't care if I'm two years old or if I'm 99 years old. Your gadget, I will never need it. Don't market me anymore. Like it's, it's a crummy gadget and I just don't see the benefit. The beautiful thing with homes is that changes. They may not be ready to sell right now, but two months from now, husband might lose the job. That just changed. So are you taking that same list and you mail it like three months in a row? Or you Six to eight weeks apart. So week one is going to get that same people I sent out on week one is also going to get the 7,500 people that get on week one, get on week nine. Week two's week 10. Week three's week 11. Gotcha. Week, does that make sense? Yep. And just put on repeat. Cool. That help? Yep. Cool. Hello. Yeah, my name is Fabio, and I wanted to ask. Fabio, what happened to your hair? They say Fabio used to be this like. Yeah. <laughs> so you better than this. Um, yeah. Thank you for the awesome value that you're providing. Yes. Um, and my question is regarding the cold calling. Uh huh. Uh, what is the process of the cold calling, and do you outsource? 
I have mine in-house. Brent Daniels has in-house and outsourced. So there's a, there's a team in, is it Costa Rica, Brent? Yes. Costa Rica that does it, and it's like 20 bucks an hour, and they're really trained on Brent's style, and so it's not like you're sending it to a group and they try to be you, but they, they're not you. These are people specifically trained. Um, but I, mine are all in-house, so I have four in-house callers calling. I customly built my CRM Podio, but if you're just beginning, I'd go something even simpler because I catch too many of my students where they're like, hey, I got Podio and it does this and it does this and it does this and it does this and it does this. I'm like, how many conversations do you have today? None, but Podio does this and it does this and it does this and it does this. And it even comes with a free massage. I'm like, okay, so how many contracts do you get? None, but guess what Podio also does? And it's like, don't do it. Um, less annoying CRM is a very simple one. You could go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash CRM and that will give you a free month and then a discount for that one. But that's just a simple basic one. And then Mojo has a CRM as well, Mojo Dialer. Great, thank you. Yep, does that help? Yes. Okay. We have time for another one. We have time for another one. You're faster at answering questions than I am. <laughs> we should write to the point. No fluff, no BS zone. Yo, tell me your name. I'm Kyle. Chris. Kyle. Kyle from Ohio? Oh, Utah. Oh, from Utah. Yes. <laughs> um, can you, um, I love what you're saying about giving back, uh, putting the person before you, you spend 30 minutes sitting down with them. What are other ways you're serving them to go above and beyond? Because uh, so I find when I'm sitting there, like they're telling me, like they're sons in rehab, they're using jail. Like, yeah. Oh, man, we got to set you up with all these programs or whatnot, but you can't do that for everyone. Yeah. So things that my acquisition managers always have, they have free $500, however they want to use it. So it could be a dumpster. It could be towards a moving company. It could be towards you name it. If you can just think outside the box. In fact, everyone's mindset should be when you go into an appointment is I'm going to get the appointment today or it's gone. If you will have that mindset, you will get more deals and you won't get that phone call. It's like, sorry, I went with Bill. Two appointments after you. <laughs> yeah, his name is Bill, and it's a problem if he gets it. And so, with that being said, you have to think about this. If you have, you're on an appointment, and your mindset is, I get this appointment or I don't get it at all, it'll make you start thinking outside the box. You can honor some things, but also give some timestamps to it. So, how many times do we hear, me and my wife need to talk this over? <laughs> Be honest. I, almost every hand can do this, right? It's, I need to talk to my wife about it. Honor that and give it a timestamp. So here's one that we'd use. You can use this starting tomorrow. I use this. Awesome. I love that you want to talk to your wife about this. I think that makes perfect sense. My wife actually said I need to go pick up some pasta and some spaghetti sauce to bring home for dinner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave for a little bit, go get the pasta and spaghetti sauce for dinner. I'm also going to get a $200 gift card. I'm going to swing back around and I'm going to come visit you guys. And ultimately if we sign tonight, I'll even leave you a $200 gift card. Does that sound fair enough? And the husband on that particular one said, yeah, that should be enough time. Do you know what he really just said? For $200, I'll sign tonight. <laughs> Think outside the box. And so I don't know what that works. I'm not a real estate agent, so I don't know if that's like bribery in the real estate world for agents. It's not for me, but I use that all the time. Just you have to think outside the box. You cannot allow other investors to come in and take that deal. You just got to think outside the box. Work with them. If they don't know the mortgage, great. Let's call the mortgage company right now. All right. Give them a big m and &M. Bring it up for m and <laughs>